Thanks for having us. So you just recently launched a new collection, the Wonder Collection. Yep. You might explain where did Wonder come from? Wonder is, again, everything that we do is always based off a conversation and we chat a lot. So uh, we had this kind of um, uh, beauties in the eye of beholder and that's how it all started and this kind of wonder, magical, like complex vision of what art is. And we didn't, I guess we're known for our boss ladies and we wanted to slowly kind of steer away from that a little bit and get a bit more expressive. So that's why we went with this kind of, I'd say, gender fluid, new, yeah. the, this so neutrality. This. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit more abstract with the artwork yeah. and you know, the pieces also feature a very big dominant graphic yes. piece on the backs yeah. of all the sweaters and one of the t-shirts actually features on the front. Um, but, and that was kind of in relation to people asking about the fine artwork and can you put the fine artwork on the clothing? Yeah. And we're quite strict when we say no yes. because you know, we work in a printed medium, predominantly screen printed or now embroidery, and they don't lend themselves. Let's talk about embroidery. That's a bit yeah. of a hardship. So what have you had to learn about embroidery to get this right? Um, it's quite similar to screen printing in terms of how you set up the file, but we're following a, a simple line instead. So you don't want to overcomplicate the artwork because at the end of the day, it becomes, it's quite messy. When every, it's line every, every line counts. Every line counts. Every line counts. Yeah. The, the, the added beauty, though, is that you can actually be more expressive with color. So we can uh, we can actually add way more colors into yes. this, and even into the casual everyday collection, yes. which is where we started with embroidery first. It's our ampersand. It's on a, a crest. Yes. Okay. Um, we could be way more expressive yeah. with color. Where with screen printing, you're quite, you can, you're limited to how many screens and ink that you're using on the garments. So. It's nice to combine the two, although yeah. one's back and one's front. What about bringing them onto the same surface? We've been considering that, and it was the first idea. But um, I suppose for us as a small business and COVID, we had too many obstacles to get to the final kind of. We already had also confirmed creation brand Thomas, so we had a deadline for that yes. for yeah, our. I saw you know, there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And you've launched Wonder with a book? Yeah. Yes, so we've launched that. We'll be launching next week. The 10th. Yeah, yeah in very Suffolk exciting. Street. Um, and they've taken half of our Wonder collection. Yes. And they've taken, actually, as well, the um, some of the Obsessive collection, which is still such a huge winner with our customers and our retailers. Did you design it for them? When was it? The Wonder collection? Yes, yeah. no. So no, not to... Disappoint, not, not to disappoint or anyone, no. But what was your vision for Wonder when you started? It was to take a step away from representing a person and maybe talking about more about abstract colour, pattern, print and design on a garment. So this model now where you sell online yourselves and then you have some retail uh, distribution, or is that kind of going to be your commercial model going forward? I think so, I think it's a lovely balance because we still I guess our our relationship with wholesale and, and vendors of that is still quite small and we're okay with that. I don't think we see ourselves in a lot of retail department stores or anything. We love the fact that they're both Irish, mm -hmm. Kenny and Mocha, we like that. If we go further afield into Europe, maybe that's a different uh, conversation. But at the moment, we like the situation that we're in with them and then we still have that strong relationship with our online customers. Yeah. You must also learn by dealing with retail. Absolutely. Dealing with it's a language that we had no clue on and we still realise that there's a very particular language used in, you know, wholesale and everything yeah. and, and, you know, even times that you're going, uh, what are they asking for? I'm not too sure. And I have Google to it. Google. But we're getting there. We're Talking getting of language, we sat down a few months back with you guys yeah. and we took a brand strategy review. How has that influenced your thinking about changing your oh, language? It's been a game changer. Like when we finished that presentation when you present it back to us we were like we want to work for Jill and Jill it was the language it just opened our eyes into how we really want to deliver our brand to our customers yeah. to getting more clients I think we have milked that deck dry it's given us point. it's given us a new sense of confidence yeah you know to put ourselves out there and approach maybe the kind of I suppose it's industry a very honest thing to admit. yeah no it has because you kind of you did put some manners on kind of that the as we would like to say colorful chaos but you put manners on it you kind of gave it some sort of boundaries and yeah. we uh, we 
it, it's, if it is, it's helping us thrive. So it strengthens your relationship in terms of the, the business. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Focus. and do you use it to kind of dismiss left of field ideas maybe? Well, even the questions we tend to ask ourselves now, yes. um, straight off the bat when, it, when we get approached by someone to even partnership or collaborate, the first things is, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the questions that you told us to keep an eye out for, that basically will align with our brand. Yeah. So that's the most important thing for us. I think the important thing about brand strategy is you don't want to be changing it every six yeah. months, but you want to be certainly looking at it every year and thinking, yeah. Do we need to tweak this? Do we need to evolve this? Yeah. You know, it's an ongoing yeah. process. Yeah. Yes, we're delighted that you're so positive about yeah, it. Yeah. We were too. But uh, you just need to keep, you know, keep through. So. Yeah, I think it really helped us at a time when we actually got involved with Shop Object over in New York. Yes. Yeah. And that trade show, we couldn't actually be there to do it. And I remember one thing that we had all talked with you guys before about was how do people get who Jill and Jill are without us being there? So using that language again, putting a deck together to help the person who was going to be representing our stall, yes, okay, you know, like good. just all those yeah. things, you know, it was really helpful. So you're no longer novices. I mean, you've, you've, you've built a good business now and, and you're growing. If you had done the brand strategy piece maybe two years ago, two years ago, do you think there'd been anything different in how you might have been doing business today? Yeah, I think we might have grown our team a little bit quicker because I think we'd understand ourselves and that sounds so ridiculous to say that it's taken, you know, outside help to understand our own business. But when you're in it, you can't see the wood for the trees. But and I think yeah. we, even with, we have, like, we are building a small team. Yeah. And even their response to, say, the conversations we'd had and their understanding of the business, they're kind of aligning with us qu more quickly. They understand what we want in return when we kind of give them briefs or you know allow them to kind of you know have input on design work it's it's quicker really good. so we work with you as part of our makers to masters uh, program which is trying to sort of nurture young uh, craft talent what advice would you give to someone thinking about starting out yet and they may have a particular skill in terms of marketing and branding what advice would you give to somebody who's going to be sort of three or four years before you, before you are I would consider what your skills are and don't take the, I suppose, the novice approach of saying, I'm, I'm, I'm a small entrepreneur, I have to do everything. I think you could consider where maybe you need to output some of those skill sets or, you know, maybe yeah, I think you can work with people outside the business. I think it's very easy to try and just wear every single hat so early yes. on. Yeah. You can drain your resources that way pretty quickly and, and possibly spread yourself way too thinly. So. Confidence, and clearly that's something, it's nice to hear you say that, the yeah. confidence comes energy and yeah. Yeah. from single Yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, look, thank you for coming in to say hello, nice to chat with you again, and uh, hope you're doing this sometime soon. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Andrew.